time. You know, this is like one of the problems that I encountered in, in, my, in my different roles is that like one of the biggest problems is that like you create the Terraform code and like, great, it's good and it's working. But then it's like the oldest joke in the book. It's like works on my machine. And then you give it to someone else and then they don't have this model or they have a different uh, version of the model and they have a different environment variable. And you're like, you yeah. pull out your hair and you're like, what is going on? It's supposed to work everywhere. Hello and welcome to this episode of Shim on Up. So today we have a very interesting episode about infrastructure as code management. And we're going to have Omri Hai from Env0 talking about this fascinating space. Hey, Omri, how are you? I'm fine. Hi, thanks for having me. How are you? So, I'm great. I'm great. It's so great to have you with us. I've been waiting for this. I love infrastructure as code so much. And it's a really interesting topic. So could you please introduce yourself? Sure, sure. So uh, my name is Omri Chai. I'm um, from Israel, as, uh, as you probably know. Um, I'm 40 years old. I have like, a lot of experience in uh, the high-tech scene for, I don't know, 16, 17 years. I'm an engineer by heart. And, uh, you know, I've been around the infrastructure and cloud ops uh, for a long time now. Um, and in the past four and a half years, I uh, founded M0 together with Oad Meislich, which is our, he's my co-founder and the CEO. Um, and I'm um, the CEO there, uh, mainly around product and R&D. Cool. Uh, so, okay, so let, let's dive into it. So how, how would you define the problem space that you're, you're in? Yeah, so first of all, infrastructure as code yeah, is a problem that uh, is trying to fix how do you manage and uh, deploy your cloud infrastructure overall. Um, with uh, cloud formation started at 2010, and then it was AWS specific, and that was the first infrastructure as code tool there. And but then, we had you know, Ansible and we had Puppet, you yeah. know? Yeah, there's Chef and Puppet and Ansible uh, prior to that, but it was more of a configuration management tools and not infrastructure as code tools. Um, they were basically managing the deployments of the, the, the VMs or the, the, the basically the application. And then, you know, uh, when AWS came uh, along and they said, hey, we need to manage the infrastructure and the networking and the services, and everything that you have on top of your cloud infrastructure. Um, so they came up with CloudFormation. Um, there was actually, there's a process there. It started with, you know, just click ops, as you like to mention it uh, <laughs> along the way, um, that you, you know, you went to the AWS uh, UI and, and clicked on, on some, some places and, and you get a VM. Um, and then they they had like the API, so a lot of uh, people use the API to automate things. And there's like the CLI, and, and there's like a bottle. Um, it was like a CLI for AWS to be, to integrate with the and basically build yeah. your own. And, and uh, today, I think that Terraform is like for cloud orchestration is the number one leading product. There is also, you know, the ability to manage cloud using Kubernetes APIs like ACK, but I guess that that's a niche. That, that's still that's, not yeah. really widely used. So, so you would say that you mainly are in the, let's say, Terraform era? Um, so we actually, um, Terraform became re very popular because it's a multi-cloud approach. Um, they don't... Uh, only support AWS, they support more than that, AWS, GCP, Azure, uh, but also, you know, IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud, your vSphere, um, and also a lot of third parties that you can manage with the Terraform today, um, such as Auth0 or SendGrid or others, GitHub, GitLab, whatever. Um, there's like, I don't know, 500 providers now for Terraform. Um, so you can manage basically everything. We actually have a provider ourselves to manage N0 with Terraform as well. Um, and it's like basically the leading framework right now for managing infrastructure as code. Um, but there's a lot of tools out there like Pulumi and TerraGround and CloudFormation and Kubernetes. Basically, it's also an infrastructure as code. Helm, there's Crossplane, Serverless, okay. there's a lot. 
CDK uh, part of it. Um, so there's a lot of tools to, that you can choose to manage. Um, but by far, Terraform is the most popular now. now. Um, but as we grow and we see more and more customers, um, we actually have support for more infrastructure as code like uh, Pulumi and Telegram and CloudFormation. And we actually introduced Helm a few weeks ago. So um, the, the space is becoming active yeah. all the time. You know, it's funny because uh, I remember like every year I go to reInvent, it's very interesting because, for example, AWS, every service they release has to be API compliant. So the API is always released together with the service. But CloudFormation is actually yet another service that needs to add support for the first service. So it's always uh, like a funny arms race where some some guy like sits and like, codes and open source like <laughs> module for Terraform that gets released before the cloud formation is available. <laughs> and yes. there's a funny story where like, like Terraform is supporting more services than cloud formation itself. Yeah, actually Terraform behind the scenes uses like the, the AWS CLI and the, and the API. So, uh, so it's sometimes it's faster than cloud formation and sometimes cloud formation doesn't have like the all the capabilities that you can have with the API and Terraform does. Um, so it's really, it really depends. And, and you can see that in Azure as well. With, uh, so Azure has ARM templates, with, which is our Azure specific. So you can see basically the community of Terraform is really powerful. Um, so they are yeah. actually building everything quite fast whenever there's a new release of a new feature. Um, and, you know, those cloud vendors also do beta, uh, you know, before it's GA. So yeah. the community can always grab that beforehand and, and try to implement that. So once it's GA, they can release the, yeah. the new version. Yeah. Okay. So, so I want to dive deeper into the problem space. So, okay. So I have engineers, they're using Terraform. Why do I need solutions like NF0? Like, let's talk about the landscape and I know that there are different solutions in the space. So what is the specific problem? Because infrastructure is code supposed to be a solution, not a problem. <laughs> so where is the problem? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so basically all those frameworks are CLI based and you need to basically go to your CLI on your terminal and run Terraform plan, Terraform apply. Um, and that's like, uh, that's the way you do it. And we like to think of what we're doing is basically what GitHub did to Git. Git was a uh, open source to manage, like, uh, how do you collaborate on top of, uh, of code? And then GitHub came and, and, you know, published a managed service and, you know, added more features and capabilities like pull requests and wikis and readme's and, and, you know, it made you realize that you need a solution in order to manage and collaborate on top of your code. And that's basically what we want to do to infrastructure as code, because um, if you're running it from your CLI, it's, you don't get any audit logs or visibility on who did what and when you don't get to have role based access. You don't have to get like guardrails and policies and who can deploy what and approval flow, which is a, similar to what you do with the PR that you need somebody to approve the plan before you actually apply it to the production environment. Um, and you don't get cost of it out of the box and you get, don't get security out of the box and you don't get like visibility on what's going on with my entire uh, infrastructure is called uh, overall within the organization and tools like ours. That's like what you, what we provide on top of that. And there's a lot of things around that, like registry and automation and CI/CD for infrastructure as code. That basically, with the framework itself, you don't get that out of the box. You need to build something, or you know, buy something. Basically, I see. So, like in a way, let me say, let me see if I understand correctly. You're saying like Terraform is an awesome tool, but it is designed for the engineer to run it on the computer and to use it. It's not designed for an engineering org where you want to share the different templates that you have, you want to have an approval flow, you want to have an audit log, maybe you're a SOC 2 compliant organization and you need to know who did what, who has access to where. And it's like the underlying infrastructure is awesome, but you need to productize the, the solution. So exactly. what solutions are there for this problem besides NF0? 
Yeah, so, so the first thing that you can see is a lot of CI tools. So sometimes will somebody just use GitHub Action or Jenkins or Circle CI to do that. Um, the other parts are Atlantis. It's an open source to do that on top of your pull request. It does like automation on top of that. Um, but it's really slim and doesn't give you the, the whole abilities that uh, N0 or tools like N0 gives you. Um, the main competition here is Terraform Cloud. Um, it's based on HashiCorp. HashiCorp is like the father and mother of Terraform. And they have like a, a commercial solution that is basically does that, but only for Terraform. Um, there's a few others like Spacelift that does it for more than just Terraform. They support Terraform, Terragrant, Plumi, Ansible, and more. Um, there's Scalar that, that basically does the same for mm -hmm. Terraform only. Um, there's actually a new a new kit on the block. Uh, they call it's called Control Monkey. It's an Israeli startup uh, that yep. does that to, for Terraform. And and there's also a solution for like Pulumi. Pulumi has Pulumi Cloud that gives you a solution on top of Pulumi. There's Upbound that does yep. that for crossplane. Um, so that's like the, the majority of tools out there, like the commercial ones and the open source ones. Okay. That, that really helps. So, um, okay. So let's dive deeper into your solution. So before we do that, could you give me some background about the company, the size, the customers, where yeah. you're at, what's your state? Sure. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, we started the company about four and a half years ago, we raised like $42 million up until now. Uh, we're around 45 people in the company right now. Um, and we have like uh, many customers um, like uh, Western Union and PayPal and MongoDB um, in nice. Israel. Yeah, in Israel, JFrog and Veronis and WalkMe uh, and others. Um, there's a, a wide range of customers from small ones to big ones and mid ones. So um, the company is growing, the product is growing uh, really nicely. And so you're in like millions of dollars of ARR, I'd guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we reached that. Um, and, and yeah, we're doing quite well. I think the market is moving towards that way. You know, the adoption of infrastructure as code is great. And now everybody understands that they need a tool to manage that. And, we're cool. exactly that. Show me. I want to see. Show <laughs> me. Okay. So I, cool. let, let's see what we're seeing here. Yeah. So this is the NGO dashboard. Um, there's a few things we need to understand. There's a few concepts that we have in the, in the N0 um, platform. The first one is the organization level where you manage things like my uh, users and teams and roles and credentials to the cloud and the audit logs and keys. Uh, we won't go into that, but basically you can manage multiple organization if you need to, um, and then assign every everything that you need inside of the organization. The first the first real concept that we have are templates. Basically, templates are a way to to create a service catalog within your organization and giving you the access to your Git repository where your infrastructure as code uh, lies. Um, okay, so let's... I created like a blueprint of, I don't know, EKS, and I want to share it exactly. with my friends. So I, I take this golden uh, Terraform mm -hmm. modules, I put it here, and then all my friends can use it. Exactly. And then you can assign it to who can access those, because sometimes you maybe want somebody to access the EKS cluster, um, but you don't want them to access the front-end server or, you know, you can you can basically have role based access on top of that to enable who can you know create and you can yeah. cluster something. Okay, so want. that's shareability and also granular shareability with my coworkers. Okay, exactly. what else? Um, so this is template. Uh, just for the sake of it, we are, when you're creating a template, we support mm. more than just uh, you know uh, Terraform. We support Terraform, CloudFormation, Pulumi, Kubernetes, and Helm is a new one. There's also workflow. I'll show it a bit later. Maybe. Wait, wait, wait. I want to. Uh, I want to ask you a question about that. So, how do you see like the, the market in terms of share? 
in, in these different tools? Because I guess those are the most popular ones because those are the ones that you chose to add. But what's the yeah. split in your, in your mind? Yeah, so we see a lot of Terraform. Terraform is the biggest one for sure. I think the second most one that we see is Terraform. So basically Terraform is an open source on top of Terraform. So you have to have Terraform to use Terraform, but we see a lot of Terraform. And what Same does Terraform give you on top of Terraform? So it gives you the ability to dry up your code um, and do not repeat yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. They have a, a way to manage uh, um, reusable modules and parameters that you can pass and variables management and AWS accounts management. They do it better it. or cloud. It's yeah. a Terraform but, uh, plus plus. Yeah, exactly. So it, it was like in the early days where Terraform does, didn't have a lot of features. Um, so they basically created a, a, an open source on top of that, and it's very popular. You can see that um, basically a lot with a lot of companies. Um, CloudFormation is a big one as well. Pulumi is something that is rising. Kubernetes, obviously, everybody has Kubernetes, and then Helm is like uh, you know the way to manage Kubernetes. Um, so we see that so often, and with large companies, you will see all of them. So yeah. you know you will see. Everything basically. So when you say so Terraform, it means that I need to give you access to my AWS, for example, or Azure, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Kubernetes, it means that you need access to my production Kubernetes cluster, and then you apply mm -hmm. the Kubernetes YAMLs. Exactly. Is the same. I see. Okay. It's so in a way, you are my like terminal to to all of my production environments. Exactly. Not not only production, every environment that yeah. you have, if you have like dev staging or, you yeah. know, whatever, uh, we give you access to that. Yeah. And it's a portal basically to manage the deployments for that. So if um, I, I use Terraform and I have my production environment, then I can have like a production replica for all of my developers. Every developer, exactly. can, you get a production environment and you get a production yeah. environment. Everyone exactly. gets a production environment. <laughs> So templates came into mind where you want to have like a lot of environments from the same infrastructure as code. Um, so that's like the, the basic concept that we thought about it when we created templates. Um, okay. Cool, let's move on. Um, the other thing that we have our project, basically project is a way to manage your entire team and co collaboration. So it can be used to separate AWS accounts or Azure subscription or GCP project, but it can also have like separation between teams and who can access what. So for example, in this use case, I have like a payment uh, project and I have a Greenfield project and a, and a, a, a merchant solution. And we also have project within project that you can define. So if you want to have hierarchy, um, I can have hierarchy as well inside a project. So let's say I have like the, the core payments team. Uh, within that, I will have two projects. One is the non-prod and one is the production one. And each one of those projects will have different users and robust access and policies on top of that to manage everything. Um, so this is a project. A project has a settings I can connect the users and the role-based access that it has. Um, and it can be like an admin or, you know, I can give it a specific role. We have also custom role and then I can basically say who can access what and where and he can do certain things in certain project. There's also policies that you can define. Um, we have like stuff like um, the number of environment, the TTL, mm -hmm. uh, custom flows, and so on show and so me, on. Show me. I get it. I get it. I want to see. Yeah. I want to see some execution. <laughs> show me. Show me the sure. sexy stuff. I want to see it run. Okay. So let's go to um, to one of the Greenfield Dev environments, and let's see um, an actual um, deployment. Um, so this is an environment that if an environment uh, exists from like the output, the resources, you can see everything and I can just redeploy it. Uh, when I do redeploy, I need to give it like a name, uh, a revision, I can add comment, I can set the TTL. There's also approval for, let's go and see that. And let's see it run and, and cool. deploy. Could you enlarge your screen a little bit, just like? Yeah. Or maybe 110. Oh yeah, okay, this is also good. 
let's do this. Yeah. Okay, so it's cloning the repo, getting the directory, yeah. loading exactly the loading the variables. Okay. Um, so we're loading the variables uh, that you defined on top of this. Um, so there's Terraform variables and environment variables. Um, we're setting the version. There's also Terraform init that we need to to execute before it run, and you can see exactly the logs. And now what's going to happen, we also tag the resource automatically. We have an open source that is called TerraTag. So you can basically tag any resource that you want automatically without doing anything. Uh, and I'll show you a bit later, we do cost. And then we, are, we also have hooks that you can run whenever you want within like before the plan or um, before the Terraform init. Here we are doing like PWD and you can run basically whatever you want. Oh, so I can actually inject time. like agents or stuff that I want in any yeah. workload. Nice, exactly. nice. Um, and now I can see the Terraform plan. So basically somebody's changing something here and, and I can see it in a nice UI. Um, you can also, also go to the nice Terraform logs, but you know, it's a, we call it a pretty, pretty plan. Uh, and you can see it in a very human readable manner. And you can also see the cost. In this case, it's an S3 bucket, so there's no actual cost that you're going to uh, apply here. And then I can either approve or not approve it. If I want to, you know, say, hey, this is not what I wanted, I can decline it or approve it. And if I'll approve it, it basically will take the plan and execute that. Um, and that's basically what you do when you run a deployment. Um, you know, this is like one of the problems that I encountered in, in my in my different roles is that like one of the biggest problems is that like you create the Terraform code and you're like, great, it, it's code and it's working. But then it's like the oldest joke in the book. It's like works on my machine. And then you give it to someone else and then they don't have this model or they have a different uh, version of the model and they have a different environment variable. And you're like, you yeah. pull out your hair and you go like, what is going on? It's supposed to work everywhere. And I guess that like having a centralized place to have it all eliminates those problems. Exactly. And also like the credentials to the cloud, you don't want everybody has like specific credentials to the cloud and you want to basically have people doing stuff in a specific AWS account or Azure subscription and you can manage that in a, in a fast, you know, in a way that you can control everything. Yeah. Basically. So you mentioned that you have solutions around cost. I know this is a very, you know, popular yeah. topic now. Everyone's trying to reduce costs. Exactly. So, so how what can you we help do them? is, um, as, as I mentioned, let's go and see this one. Um, this is an environment. It's a VPC on uh, AWS. And what I mentioned before is that we have cost. Uh, we are automatically tagging all the resources that you have on top of your infrastructure as code. And then what we do is give you the ability to see over time how much is that specific resources cost you in your AWS GCP mm. or Azure account. And even if you have like an environment that is cross cloud, so you have like resources in Azure and AWS, you will see it in one graph. Uh, and also we correlate that for deployment. So you can, we have like the entire deployment history of that environment and you can see which deployment increased or decreased the cost and go mm -hmm. and find it. I can also see that in a project level. So whenever I want to see the entire project, I can go in and see like, hey, this project cost me like a dollar sixty each day. And basically I can say, hey, this project, this team, it's cost me that much and that much. We yeah. are going to implement alerts and as well as project management. So you can say, hey, this team only gets like $200 a month to deploy their uh, infrastructure and you'll get alerts once it's, it's going to happen. And you also get cool. that in the organization level as well cool. to see like everything that is going on. There's also cost estimation, but this is like basically before you do the plan, we'll show you an yeah. estimation how it will Effect okay, with your so um, I always ask those questions. So two more questions. Number one, how much does it cost? <laughs> so it really depends on uh, on what you want. We also have a free tier, so everybody can you know use it and try how them. How do you get in the free tier? What do you get? 
Um, so basically, you get all the features, um, and it's basically uh, limited to the number of environments that you can run and the, mm-hmm. the number of users you can have on top of the. So that. it's false self service free tier. I can just go and sign free in tier, and yeah. Exactly, and you actually can, uh, you know, if you want for the pro tier, you can basically go ahead and swipe a credit card and start using it. If you and want I pay to. by environments, or how does the pricing structure work? So the pricing is structured based on deployments, on successful deployments. I didn't show you there's like drift detection and other mm-hmm. stuff that you can do and PR plan or automation on top of that. But basically, it's uh, whenever you change resources we count that as deployment if mm-hmm. there's no change we don't count that and it's basically usage based so um as much as you know you deploy it to the cloud this is how you will pay there's also a larger tier where for business and enterprise for you know custom legal terms and we have self yeah. hosted agent for security and more you know in depth features that we support there um but all in all cool. Um, the free tier and the pro tier gets, you know, most of the features. Awesome. So if I want to get started, how do I get started? Yeah. So just, you know, click n0.com and uh, go to the website, click on free trial and you get like um, a free trial for signing up. Um, it's an easy sign up with your Google, Microsoft, Bitbucket or GitHub. Um, and you're ready to go. There's like a nice walkthrough on what you need to do and how to implement that. Awesome, Omri. Thank you so much. It was very interesting. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.